I have over 40 tear tray DIY ideas. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. We're going to start off with the little globe that comes from Dollar Tree. And they have two different uh, sizes that I have seen, and I'm going to use the smallest one because this will be on the tear tray. We want to have room. I'm going to use some of this grass that's on a mat, or it's moss on a mat. Then I'm going to use some roses and little picks and some foam. I'm just going to use my little heat gun here and I'm going to remove my label. If you use this or a hair dryer, it's going to let that glue kind of loosen up and it'll come right off. See, now we have two pieces. I'm going to use my metal ruler here to just cut this styrofoam ball and just a piece big enough to glue onto the bottom of that little circle. So it looks almost like a little heel. This is just an easy way for me to do it. Um, you can do this any way you want to. Use your X-Acto knife or just cut it with scissors. We'll use what we have. So I know this is going to fit and it's going to be the perfect size. I'm going to use some of this green chalk paint. I think this is moss. And I'm going to go all over the base. I go over the outside here. I'm also going to get on the top and all in the crack there so that you don't see any of the brown when this project is complete. You can use any color you like. If you like a more modern look, you can use white or black. That would be pretty too. And then I'm just going to dry this quickly. And I'm going to take a little hot glue. It's best if you use a cool temperature. You can see mine is smoking hot, literally. Um, but we're going to adjust that shortly. I'm just going to glue it down on there. And I want to be sure that there's room around the edges because we have to put that top back on, that uh, cloche or that dome. So I'm going to use this sheet moss and kind of get an idea of how big it needs to be. And then I will trim it down with my small scissors. This not exact thing, you know, you don't have to be perfect with this. You could always trim it down a little bit more or add to it if you cut it too small. And then this looks about right. So now, put it on a low temperature. You don't want to burn your fingers because we're going to be handling this quite a bit. In order to get this to fit, I'm going to cut some little slices in here just so that I can overlap it and there won't be any buckling or wrinkles. So I like using notches for this type of circular um, project. I'm going to put a little glue in the middle, careful not to burn your fingers, because that backing right there is just like, um, it's like a plastic grid. So if you get some from the Dollar Tree, then it's probably going to have the same type of backing. So protect your fingers where you can. And then I'm just going to work on opposite sides from each other and place these little flaps down that I have created. That's going to give a nice, smooth, unlumpy finish. But you can see here that I've overlapped my moss onto the crack where we have to put it back down. So I'm just simply going to take my scissors and trim it off. I'm using an alcohol wipe to clean this. You can use soap and water or some glass cleaner, whatever you want to use, just to get the fingerprints and everything off of it. I'm going to trim down a piece of my little rose bush here. And you need to make sure that the top is going to fit. Make sure that the height is correct. You can measure it against the dome. And you also need to make sure that it's not too thick on top because once you put the dome on, it's going to close it together. It's going to pinch it together somewhat. So I'm just adding just a little bit of greenery to it. Simple. You can certainly use some glue and add around the base if you want to. And then I decided to add this little bird in here. I got these at the thrift store and I thought, you know what, let's put a little bird under there. This is the summertime and he's looking for some reprieve from the heat. And I think this one looks like a better fit to scale. So we're just going to hide him right underneath there. Yep, that'll do. And it's a little surprise when you turn it around. I love it. 
So I'm going to poke everything on the inside, place the dome back down, and lock it into place. And I think this is really cute. This type of thing is really nice to put on the top of a tiered tray if you don't have like the little handle that comes off. If you have a flat surface on the top, this is a really cute use these stickers that. that came from Dollar Tree. It's just some little uh, greenery fern pieces, you know, um, flower petals and things like that, or leaves. That's even better. There are two of these little frames here. I'm going to use the smaller one. But if you have a large tear tray, you can certainly use the bigger one. Whatever's going to work for you. You can pull these two pieces of plastic out, take the center out very easily, and then just add these down. And this is going to look like pressed greenery. Use as much as little or as little as you like. If you're careful with these, you can reposition them. I actually did move them around a little bit before I got my final result. But be very careful when you take them off that you don't pull them apart. I like this look. I live in the south in the country. We get an early summer and it lasts a very long time. And we have lots of wild ferns growing in the woods beside our house and they are absolutely gorgeous. So it definitely reminds me of summer. Nice. You could also use the pressed flower stickers if you would like. They have those too, but I haven't seen them yet. These are thrifted pieces. But you can get them at, you know, any place that you thrift. You can probably get something similar at the Dollar Tree. I'm not certain. We're going to use a little water. We're going to use a brush, some pit berry, some masking tape, antiquing wax. I'm going to mix just a few drops of that antiquing wax into a little bit of water. And it may be a half a teaspoon. I'm going to mix it up and we're going to make a stain with this. I've just laid it down on my little paper. As we're recycling that, we're going to use it to um, save a little bit of money and save our tabletop. I'm just going to brush all into the little shutters here. These probably came off of some type of a dollhouse project. I'm just showing you the difference in the two colors. If you wanted to leave it plain, you can. I prefer a little rustic look, so I like giving it a little bit of uh, depth and a little color here. So we're going to let them dry. And this is how they look. They dry a little bit lighter. So now to get these together, we're going to use the masking tape as somewhat of a hinge on the back. You're not going to see it. There's a little space between the two shutters. And the more space you leave, the bigger of a fold you will get. And I'll show you that in just a minute. You'll see what I mean. You see how I'm putting a little space there? Now, just that little bit of space is going to give you just a little bit of bend. And then you can, if you like, just like that, that's fine. If you like more of a bend, open that space up a little bit. So you're going to need something to help stand it up. You can use a regular Jenga block or you can use these little building blocks from Dollar Tree. I'm going to go ahead, once I get this at the right uh, fold, the right degrees, I'm going to add a little hot glue in there so that it will stay in that position. And I did adjust it. Now you can see it will stand up on its own, but I'm going to give it a little support anyway. And I'm just going to use a little extra support from one little block in the back right on top of that fold. And that's going to give me a little more support. So I'm going to take this pit berry and you know it comes in a long string. You can it's wired so you can reposition it. So I've folded it down, twisted it around into a little wreath to give you an idea of what you can use if you wanted to decorate your little doors with that. I decided that I wanted to use a sign and I have not used this calendar yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it. I love this little, looks kitcheny to me, like a kitchen. So maybe those are pantry doors, who knows? I'm gonna cut it down off the back of that calendar and then I'm going to trim it out on a piece of this uh, cardboard. And this actually came out of the calendar. I like to reuse all kinds of things. I'm going to take a thin ribbon. And you can get these at the Dollar Tree now. You could use jute if you would like. Whichever way you want to do it. Because I want this to be kind of freestanding. And I wanted to, I don't know, 
I like the look of it instead of gluing it right down to it to make it look like maybe it is actually hung from the door. So I'm just going to glue it onto the top back and then when we lift it up, ta-da, we have a little hanging sign from our pantry door in our kitchen. What about that? And it also reminds me of the outdoors, so it's perfect. Okay, this is going to be a little birdhouse. This is a little thrifted house form. These little birds are thrifted. I got a big package of birds and leaves, butterflies, frogs, all kinds of goodies. This is a little bit of the burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree, and then I'm going to use a pick. Using a baby wipe and a little bit of that antiquing wax, I'm just going to rub this together and then rub it all over this little form. Be sure when you thrift that you really give your items a good cleaning. You don't know what kind of dust and bacteria you're bringing home, so be sure you clean it. That is already done. And then now on my clean dry surface, I'm adding the stain. It's gonna warm it up. It's gonna take that orangey look down a bit. And I like it. I wanna give it a backing. Gonna make this look somewhat like a little birdhouse. So I'm going to cut this piece down and it fits perfectly so that we can add some hot glue. And it will look like it belongs there. I love Dollar Tree ribbon and I just love Dollar Tree crafting items. They have really got some good stuff. Even with the price increase, I've found that I'm still finding you know, they're bringing new things in the store, and I'm very happy about that. Now I'm just going to trim off what I don't need along the bottom and on the top because the back is already perfectly fit. And this is how it's going to look before we put our little birds in there. Nice. Almost looks like a screen door or some chicken wire, doesn't it? Now I'm going to use some jute, and we're going to make some little bird nest. Just twirling it around my fingers, twisting it into, you know, not tied, but somewhat of a little knot. It kind of sticks to itself because it's fuzzy. And then I'm going to decide where I want my little bird nest to be. One in the top corner. And just press that down. Watch your fingers, wear your protectors if you need to. Remember, cool temperature glue so you're more safe. And I'm going to take the biggest bird and put him right in the top corner. These birds could be painted if you wanted to. It's almost like a plaster, like maybe somebody had done a project because it was a bag full of them, and maybe someone made these, handmade them. They just never got around to doing anything with them, but they are very happy in my craft supply because I have been using them like crazy and I love them. Look how sweet the little bird is in the corner. Oh, they're so cute. I love little birdies. They're so cute and graceful and they're just sweet. I love to watch them. Now just take whatever pick that you like. Pull these apart. They can be trimmed down. I like this because it looks like grass. And I like the grassy look. You know, not all birds nest in trees. Some of them actually nest on the ground. Birds, not just ducks. Some regular old birds like to nest on the ground. But we want to give them a little bit of security and privacy, so we're going to add some grass here and there. I'm going to trim the pieces up so that I get exactly the length that I want and the look that I want. You know, Dollar Tree has a lot of really nice greenery this uh, spring and summer. I have noticed they have fern pieces, they have, I think they had eucalyptus. I know they even have olive branches. They are really nice. I've seen them, I haven't bought them, but yeah, they're really, really nice. Most of my greenery comes from the thrift store. I'm blessed with a very, very good um, Goodwill bins, and I get so much from there. But even if you don't have exactly what I have, you can go and find something that you like. My channel is all about making it my own and you make it your own exactly how you like it. I think most of us crafters want to give you inspiration, you know, but you don't have to do it exactly like we do it. Just watch, enjoy it, 
get inspired, take away from it. What brings you joy and what is helpful to you and just leave the rest, right? So the last little bird has got to go on top. She's not on her nest right now. Maybe she's a baby and she's learning to fly. So right on the top, perfect. I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying my video. Okay, we're gonna use these mushrooms that I got during the fall from Dollar Tree. This is a thrifted basket, a little block, some more of that greenery we just used, some foam, and a little scrap of that moss. We got some wax here as well. Now I want this basket to stand on its own. So I'm just gonna go right to the base of the basket and put this block here so that it kind of sits slightly at an angle. And this will do it. Now we're gonna measure and cut down a piece of foam. Because this bowl, this well, this basket, it has graduated edges, I'm gonna make it a little more narrow in the back and a little wider in the front for the base of where we're gonna put our mushrooms. Then I'm gonna measure my grass. I'm gonna put my, well, it's moss. I'm gonna put the moss down. I keep calling it grass. And then I'm going to glue that down, which I should have done in the first place, but I got carried away. You know how it is sometimes when an idea hits you and you're just going with the flow. Well, I just kind of went with the flow. All right, so now that's glued down. We're gonna glue along here because I don't wanna see any of that foam. I want this to be right to the edge of our little basket. Trim off the excess. Now we're gonna color our mushrooms. So you can color these any way you want, but a very common mushroom is a mushroom that has a brown cap on the top and a kind of a cream colored stem. And so the bottom of it is already done. That's the way it is when they put it in the bag. Then I'm just gonna color the top. And to me, that looks perfectly like a natural mushroom. Little hot glue, and then place these wherever you like. Um, in my experience, from what I've seen, mushrooms grow in groups. They grow in clusters. So I'm going to cluster mine on one side of this basket. I got the first two down. And I colored four, but I'm not gonna use the fourth one. I'm just gonna use three. And since there's a slant right here, I'm gonna put him off to a slant just a little bit. Gives a little interest. Isn't this cute? It's cute just like it is so far. But following the same technique that I used with our little birdhouse, I'm gonna add a little bit of greenery to the outside of this. All of this really, it's eye-catching, it's interesting, you know, it gives your eye something to move around and over, and I think it's just so adorable. These picks from Dollar Tree, fantastic. Love them, recommend them. They have so many different styles of greenery just on that one pick. You can pull it apart and use it on several different projects. For $1.25, you really can't okay, beat that. Okay, there's that greenery bouquet again. We're gonna use some mini pots. You can use this kind or the other kind, whatever you have. I'm gonna use some blocks, some foam, and this little palette sign from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna start off with my plaster paint, and I am going to coat this down in my chalk paint, all in the cracks, all over the sides, and then I'm gonna put it aside to dry, or you can dry it if you have a tool that you like to use. I'm gonna use some rub-on transfers to decorate these little pots, yes. I love this idea. So you can cut off the little miniatures that you like to fit on your little pots. I did thrift mine, but you could probably find something at the Dollar Tree or the craft store. Just watch your sales so you be sure that you save as much money as you can on your projects. I'm going to press these down on the pots. And then using my fingernail and using a popsicle stick, whatever you have, you can press those down. Now, I should have been a little more careful. I still had some glue sticky on my fingertips. And if you touch the underside of these transfers, these little rub-ons, they will stick to you. So there are some sections you can see on my fingers <laughs> where I have little pieces that are missing. 
The pots don't have every bit of what they're supposed to have because I'm wearing them on my fingertips. But that's okay, it's rustic looking. I don't mind that. So I use two pieces on this one. One on the lip of the pot or the top ring and then one on the bottom. And this may be my favorite pot. I don't know. The one with the roses is pretty too. But they're really super cute. See my fingers? And I cut my thumb in another project. No worries though. Alright, so I want to rough them up a little bit more since I already kind of shredded them when I put them on. I'm just going to use my sanding block to do that. Just kind of blend it out. Give it a little scruffiness. Um, if you are somebody from my channel, you already know how I love rustic. And if you're from Jackie's channel, welcome, welcome, welcome over. I'm so glad to have you here. I would love it if you would subscribe. If you would like to see more budget-friendly DIYs for me, I would love to show you that. All right, so now you're going to stick these down on your little palette. You can use E6000, whatever type of glue that you want to use for this, but hot glue works best for me. My tear tray is going to be in the house, so it's not going to be out in the weather. It's the glue is going to work fine. The hot glue will work fine. So, so far, this is what we have, and because of the way I put my pot on the bottom, it could actually stand by itself without anything on the back. But just in case, this is what you can do. You can use a block on the back, or you could use the squares on the back. You can use a jingle block, whatever you have to give it a little extra support. I'm going to cut down my little foam here, and I'm going to press this into each one of my pots. Because, of course, we have to have some beautiful flowers in there, right? Press that down in there. And then I'm just going to start taking this pick apart. I'm going to pull all of the little stuff off and the little parts that are on top. I love these little yellow pieces and I thought these would be the perfect things to be in these pots. So I'm taking the little yellow pieces and just pressing those in. And I want to try to have basically the same look in every pot, but you don't have to. You can mix it up. You can use different flowers. You can use, if you just wanted to use greenery, you could. If you had tiny succulents, you could do that. You know, just as some ideas for you. You can mix your bits up. If you collect all of your scraps from your florals, like I do, in a little box or a bowl, then you can just use that bunch of things in this project because they're just little bitty pieces. They're tiny, they're miniature. And you see how it looks so far? I love that. They look like little wildflowers growing in there. Just a simple, pretty little rustic cottagey look to me. Oh, and those, those little rub-ons really did make those pots look perfect. You could paint your pots if you prefer that. And you can use any type of rub-on that you like if you decide you don't like the ones that I went with. So taking another little tiny bird, he's going to sit on the fence. How about that? I'm going to use that same plaster paint for this super easy little project here. I'm going to tap in and dry brush this on every side of these little squares. Now, I don't recall if I got these squares from the thrift store or if they came from Dollar Tree because they were not in their original packaging. They were in a Ziploc bag in my craft stash. But I'm sure you could find something close to it. As a matter of fact, I saw that Dollar Tree is carrying, they look like little dice in the crafter section now, and that would be even better than what I'm using. But that's what I mean. This is inspiration for you. You take it and run with it. Once it is dry, I'm gonna take these really pretty, I guess they're like eucalyptus transfers, little rub-ons, and I'm just going to put those on this block. I have found that it's easier to cut the pieces off that I'm going to use because I like to try to hold them in place. If you don't hold the little plastic down or the little, um, yeah, the little plastic sheet that's on top, sometimes the transfer can jump around a bit and then you'll get little skips in your pattern and little um, lines and, you know, like a little disturbance in your pattern. So if that doesn't bother you, that is absolutely fine. Um, but, you know, Just do your best to make it as good as you like it. And then of course, if you do make a mistake, you could always go back with your sanding block and rub all over the top on each little surface and then it will look like you did it on purpose. Mm-hmm, yeah. 
little tip to you there. So there's our first one down. And these fit nicely. And remember, you can cut these. They're just like little stickers. So if anything overhangs and you don't want to use it, just cut it off. You know, trim it down if, if you don't want to waste anything. Just trim it down and then you can use your scraps on another project later. I have definitely used transfer scraps on other projects. So just hang on to them. Do you have a big crafting area? Do you have like a she shed or a garage or a place that you use? I craft in my basement. Uh, it's a big basement, so I have a lot of room, but I'm in the process of cleaning it right now because it is a mess. I'm a messy crafter. Now I'm going to do my own little spin on a garland, a beaded garland. I'm going to take, I have a big collection of beads. You see my beads, aren't they beautiful? Um, I'm going to take a piece of white. It's like a rope or a cording, but you can use jute. You can use any color of cording that you want, whatever you want to use for your decor. Hey, maybe if you're doing a lemon theme, you could do the little yellow and white baker's twine. That would be pretty, or bees, that would be pretty. But I decided to use three colors of wood. Again, this is rustic for me because I like rustic, but you don't have to do this. You can use any color you like. I'm just going to create my pattern over and over again, dark to the lightest. Just like that. I have already got it tied down to my little antique doily down there. Once I get all my beads on, I'm going to go back through that original hole that I had where I tied my first end, and I'm going to tie it around the bottom of this one. And so now, rather than just having a strand of it hanging down with something or a tassel or something on the end, I've got it where it's all connected together and you can actually hang it from something on your tear tray. So if you have a knob on the top of your tear tray, you can hang it right off of that or you can just lay it down. I'm going to use a candle topper. That's right, this is the top of a candle jar. And some more of those same rub-ons. I'm going to cut this middle piece off because it's going to be the perfect size for this lid. I'm going to use my heat gun to take that off. I love this thing. It has saved me so much time. I don't have to scrape anymore. And then I'm just going to go ahead and figure out how I want to lay this down. I'm kind of looking at my wood, the grain of the wood to see how I want this to go on here. That is not important. It just, in my OCD mind, I want it to look a certain way, so that's why I'm doing it, but you do it however you like. And you don't have to use a wood. If you don't have a wood top, you can use Bath and Body Works top. You could spray paint it any color you want and then put your rub on. Perfect. That's easy, isn't it? And it's something you already had at home. So I'm just gonna press it down really well. I'm just going back over with my fingers to make sure everything's stuck down nicely. And I decided that I wanted to add a B right in the middle of my wreath. I mean, why not? If we're gonna try to convince anybody that it's live greenery, we gotta have a live insect in there, don't we? And why not a bee? I love bees. Jackie loves bees too. You gotta check out her bee video. Nice. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of press that down with my fingernail, right? Sort of in the center, like it's flying around in there confused probably because there's no flowers in my eucalyptus wreath but there you go I like that looks like it belongs in there doesn't it so mix and match those too you can definitely mix and match your transfers now to make it stand because I want this to be a little tear tray sign I'm gonna add some hot glue on a block right on the back and I'm going to embellish it with some of this braided twine mine came from Amazon but you can now get beautiful twine in three packs at Dollar Tree. Yes, go and get some before it sells out because I'm telling you, it's got to be a hot item. Dollar Tree knows what we like. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this to go all the way around this largest edge. So the top edge, I'm gonna go around with this beautiful jute and cord braid. I just thought it would be nice to kind of trim it out. I don't necessarily want it to scream that it came from 
you know, thrifted materials. And now it will almost look like it was store-bought. And I love that. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. I'm gonna add a little bow to the top, so we're gonna do a shoelace bow, very simple. You're just gonna make two little loops, wrap them around each other, and then you can adjust the size of your loops by pulling down the tails. So get it the right size. Whatever size that you like is going to be the right size. There's no wrong in crafting. And then with a the little hot glue, I'm just gonna attach it to the top. You can do it to the center, the side, the bottom. Mine's just going to be right on the top of the cord that's already there. Isn't that sweet? This is nice. You could even call this farmhouse if you wanted. I'm just going to trim off a little extra. I always like to look at my projects one last time before I call it a day. And I like the look. That's nice. Yeah, I think that's good just like that. We're gonna make a mini tray to go on our tear tray. Yep, that's right. We're gonna use some little of these little dollar store Jenga blocks. We're gonna use whatever beads you like. I'm using a beautiful green color. We're gonna start by just making a little base, I guess you could say. And I'm just using my glue to place these together. You can use wood glue if you want, but I'd like to get my projects done quickly so that I can share them with you. So we're gonna use the quickest option, which is the hot glue. Now we have a little base, and we need to upholster our base. So I've got some of this thrifted fabric. I got a bunch of it, just a big piece. I've used it in other projects, and now I'm using it again here, and I love it. I'm gonna just wrap this sort of like a present maybe. I'm gonna start from one side. Press that down, protect your fingers, don't forget. I'm still using the cool glue. I'm gonna trim off a little bit because now I know what size I think I'm going to need here. And it is not gonna be perfectly neat on the bottom, but I'm not going for perfection on the bottom of my project. I'm just not doing it. But if you would like to, you certainly can trim that down so that it looks like the other side. I'm just gonna overlap this one. Pull it nicely. I don't wanna distort my stripes, so I'm trying to be conscious of that. And then, once that is glued down, I'm going to start kind of deciding how I want to fold over and glue my edges. So this is always kind of a process where I'm trying to decide how I want to do something and the best way to show you how to do something. So that was not the way that I want to show you. We're going to notch it out instead and I think this is going to be a lot better. It's going to be less bulky and I think easier for you to understand. So you see we just notched out that section. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to notch it out just on the bottom part. I got a little bit of glue on my scissors, so now they're, I need to clean them up so they'll cut nicely again. But you see how it's notched? Fold it down with a little hot glue there. So you're gonna press it down into the hot glue. And then that little triangle part there, a little envelope flap, we're gonna fold it over just like that. So I'm gonna add a little more hot glue across the bottom fold it. Now go to the other side, same process. Add a little hot glue, fold it, a little more glue, and then fold that over. And then you can tack it down on the bottom as well or trim it off. We're going to use the beads as feet. So I'm just going to start in my corner. I'm using my fingers and my thumb to try to center where I want them to be so they're placed in the right area on each corner the same distance from the corner. I'm gluing my fingers down. It's on the cool temperature though, so it's okay. I didn't burn myself. And then I'm gonna do the third corner and then one more corner. And we have a little riser. You can put a little candle on here, a little flickering candle, definitely not a, a real flame candle, but a flameless candle or you can put your little block on there like I'm gonna do. I have added a string of lights to my mushrooms, which I love. 
you can do the same thing. Put your string of lights in there and just put the little battery pack on the back. I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you so much to all my subscribers who have been here. New ones, old ones, you know I love you and you know that I believe in you. You can definitely do these projects. You don't have to do it the same way I do it. Take your inspiration from it and run with it. I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up. It helps my channel tremendously. It tells YouTube that I've worked hard and that they see my effort. It's a Dollar and I Tree appreciate project. It. Get you some ribbons from the Dollar Tree, some jute, some colored jute, um, another scrap of that fabric, and then just a little mason jar decoration. And this was from Christmas. I'm gonna cut off this jute. And you can leave your, you can either cover up that decorative piece or you can leave it and then that way you have a reversible sign. I'm gonna remove this off the back. I don't want this to show through. I don't want the dimension of it to show through on my fabric. So I'm just gonna add some Mod Podge. Now with Mod Podge, you wanna go very thin if you're using paper. So if you decide to use paper instead of fabric, go very thin so you don't get lumps and bumps. But when you're using fabric, you can definitely use more. So I'm gonna put down a thick coat of it, like I'm putting mayonnaise on toast. And then I'm gonna put, press it down, and then I'm gonna add more Mod Podge on the top. I'm using a matte Mod Podge. If you want this to be, if you really want those white stars on the fabric to pop, you need to use white paint underneath first and let it dry really well and then do this process. When you do it this way, it's gonna look a little more what what is the what is the um, the name of the style? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? I want to say Americana, but it's not Americana. It's something else. But it's going to be a little more rustic because you can see here when it dries, it, the stars look a little more cream colored. They're a little bit darker, and the fabric is a little bit darker. So I'm just going to trim it off here, and then I'm going to take my sander. And I'm going to go around the edges and this is going to give it a nice clean finish. Now because we put that Mod Podge all the way over the corners, that fabric is nice and stiff like a piece of paper and it will come off easily, crisply, and cleanly. But don't worry, if there's a little bit of, of um, you know, where it's coming kind of rough looking, just go ahead and add a little more Mod Podge and allow it to dry. So then I'm going to take a piece of jute, just cut a long section off here. I'm gonna go back over the middle. You can take your jute all the way up if you want, or you can make it as thick or thin as you would like. Wrapping it back around, this is the same style that it had with the Christmas sign, but it's gonna cover up your edge. Flip it over in the back, glue it down on itself, and trim off the excess. Protect your fingers. I'm using my cool temperature here. Okay, so now for a bow. You can do any type of bow you like. You can do the little shoelace bow like you saw on the other project that I showed you how to do. But I wanted to make a little messy bow for this. I think it just would look really great with the coloring and the style of that fabric. So I'm gonna do three inch strips. I wanna put some browns in there and some reds. I'm trying to choose a red that's a little deeper so that it matches better with the fabric, which now looks a little more burgundy colored or maroon. You can even use jute in there. Here's some wired ribbon from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna add that in there too. And then you're just going to make X's and crisscross it on itself. You do not have to use a particular pattern. You can stack this however you like. This is just the way I do it. Again, there's no wrong and just stack that all in there. Any color you like, any style you like. Dollar Tree has a huge variety in their Crafter Square now. I could not believe it. And the lady at my store told me earlier this week that she's got boxes and boxes in the back of new crafting stuff. So I'm excited to go back and see what they have now because they have really, really come a long way uh, in their ribbon game. So now I'm just going to use jute around the middle, tie that super tight in a couple of knots so that it stays down. And then I'm going to be trimming off that jute so that the jute itself becomes part of the bow. So there you go. I didn't cut it off short. It's the size of the rest of it. And look how cute this is. Look at this bow. 
I love this. Beautifully rustic. And I can just add it down in the center, in the top, where the jute is, or to either side. Whichever way you like best, do it that way. And see, I'm fiddling with everything. I want to make sure that everything is spread out nicely. And that's where we're going to put it. Then you can do your final trimming of the bow if you want to cut down some things. If you want to, if you have a particular ribbon that needs dovetailing or whatever, you can certainly do that at that point too. And really, this, as it is right now, would be perfect. Perfectly fine. But I want to do a little something extra. So I thought, let's go ahead and use those beads and let's make the number four like for the 4th of July. So I'm just drawing it down with my pencil and then I'm going to be covering it up. This is just going to be the guide and I know, can you see it? Yeah, you can see that. And then I'm just going to lay these out to make sure it's what I like because it's pencil that we used. I can always erase that off of there if I don't like the way that it looks. I always like to do kind of a dry run to see how it's going to look before I do it. So see, I'm adding a little bit. This is just, you know, the basic form of the number four that I'm using. You could use little stickers or little star stickers or any type of a bead or sequin, you know, depending on what your style is here to make this your own. We always want to make it our own. Just because this is my style doesn't mean it's yours and that's okay. You watch the videos, you take the inspiration, and then you make it your own. See how easy this is to do? Just continuing around and I want to butt those little beads right up next to one another so that I don't leave any weird gaps. Starting from the inside and working out very simply like this. And look at that little four. I love that, that's so precious. And scraps of wood that my husband gave me from I think a project maybe working on the porch. It may be when we made the little, we have a little section beside our house where we keep our rakes and our gardening stuff. I think it might be from the post or something there. The framing, I think. I'm gonna use some white chalk paint and this is actually plaster so it's a little off white. And I'm gonna cover each one of these blocks all the way, except I left the back off just because I'm trying to save my paint. And then they're different sizes and that's no problem. I like it like that. This ribbon folds, as I showed you in the other project, it will crease when you fold it, which makes it perfect for this project. So I'm just kind of looking to see how much I wanna use here so that it appears that it's sort of framed or in the center. And I'm gonna fold each one of these and then put it down in the center of each block. Very easy. If you don't have ribbon that you like, you can certainly use pieces of uh, scrapbooking paper or craft paper. Um, you could paint this, you could do whatever you like. I'm gonna use Mod Podge again. I'm gonna put that down here and this is how we're going to stick the ribbon to it. Now I'm not going to use as much this time because I don't want to change the color of my ribbon and it does tend to darken up a bit when you use Mod Podge, but I will go back and do the edges just to make sure that it stays down. And then one more time here on the end for the last block and put that down and then I'll go back over and kind of go around mainly my edges just because I want to make sure that they're sealed down. anything to peel off. Y'all, this was an easy project. It really was. Now, I'm just using some of these little, I guess they're chipboard or something like that, letters. I'm going to pick out USA. You can use any stickers you like. You can use the little wooden pieces that you get from Dollar Tree, the little alphabet pieces, if you would like. You can glue your blocks together uh, from side to side if you would like, but I'm going to show you an alternative way to do it if you don't want to do that. And then I'm just going to kind of lay these down to see where I want them so that each of the letters are in the same spot when they are standing, you know, kind of the same height. 
I love the silver on these. I've had these forever and I've used them in Christmas crafts before, but they're very appropriate for 4th of July. Okay, so you can see how that looks. Yes. All right, now to decide how we wanna put these together, I'm just gonna give you some options. I'm gonna double up some jute, a red piece and a brown piece, and I'm going to just tie around here. Now these are not glued together yet, so you may see them shuffling around. Don't be bothered by that. I wanna give you your options, because at this point I was still playing around to decide exactly how I wanted to do it. You can take a bow and put it in the middle, or you can just wrap it and not put a bow at all. That would be fine. You could also move this to the bottom and do it around the bottom section, or you could just use several layers of jute on the bottom going round and round, if you would like to. I am going to glue these together just using popsicle sticks. I'm going to support two pieces and then in the middle section I'm going to support the other two pieces just like that and that'll hold it. Now I'm just pressing down to make sure that that glue is catching on all that and give it a minute to try to sit up and dry. Now I'm just going to slide that bow because it's not glued down to the sides. So you can see how it would look if you wanted to do it this way. But for me, I decided another option. I just didn't want all that extra stuff going across my blocks. So I'm gonna use a few pieces of red, a few pieces of the regular jute, and I'm just going to make a little shoelace bow. Shoestring, shoelace, whatever you wanna call it. Very simple little bow. And then I'm just gonna pull each of those little pieces apart. Again, so it looks festive like a firework exploding. And we're gonna put it right there in the corner. Easy enough, right? Trim your tails where you want them so you get the length that you like without it getting in the way of your letters and it will be perfect. This was very easy, but I want to give it a little more support because that one block on the side is really big. I feel like that would snap off pretty easy. So one more popsicle stick is going to go across all of them toward the top. I really like these. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We're gonna use some of these rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. And they just peel right off of that paper backing. They are beautiful, they have a spring motif. We're gonna use two of these little wooden boxes. Just one for this transfer though. So I'm gonna take little parts and sections of this one sheet to go all the way around this box. I started off using my Mod Podge squeegee, but it does not give enough pressure. So I do recommend that you switch to either a, um, there's these Cricut type tools at Dollar Tree. Get one of those, they're harder and it works better because you really wanna make sure you burnish that down to get a nice finish where everything sticks, just like this. You can see it's hanging over just a little bit on the W, not a problem, you can press that down and just sand it right off. Pretty much it scrapes right away when you touch it. And I'm gonna do that on the edges too, just to make it look like a stamp rather than a transfer. I love this little bicycle, very springy. Now I'm gonna to move to another part of the transfer. And you don't have to be concerned about it reaching all the way to the edges. I wanted to be sure that I could use this one transfer on the entire thing. So there are gonna be some spots that look blank but we're gonna fill those in at the end. So if you start to raise it up slowly and you notice some is still stuck to the paper instead of on your project, just lay it back down and go ahead and apply a little more pressure. And then I'm just sanding it off like I did the rest of it. I'm gonna move around to another section and keep going. So this box has four sides that you can see and a bottom and an open top. So we need four areas to cover this box. And I think that this looks great. I love these little wooden boxes from Dollar Tree. The color is already beautiful. The grain is gorgeous. I didn't feel the need to put any stain on it because honestly, I don't know that you would be able to see all of the light colors if we used a dark stain. So this is fresh and light colored. I think it's very pretty. Moving on, we have enough here for another side. Don't be concerned if it tears or if there's some pieces that are kind of rough looking. It's just going to give it an aged look and that is okay. 
that is fine. It's going to look beautiful and shabby chic and rustic. See, I'm taking this butterfly that had a little bit of damage and I'm just taking one of those wings to put in a, a little empty spot on the bottom of the flowers. And then a word that was left over, I'm going to take that word and put it right there. Don't be concerned about the band-aids. I've been doing some work on my carpet. We're pulling up carpet and working on getting new flooring, so I've torn my poor little fingers to pieces. But this is how it looks so far. And I'm going to find another piece that's on the transfer paper still and just rub that down on that side. And that's so simple. So very you can use simple. any transfers you like. So for the other box, we're going to use this old calendar from Dollar Tree. So if you still have your calendars and don't know what to do with them, pull them out. This particular one I love because of the flowers. So I'm going to take out July 22 and pull that calendar out and then decide how much we're going to need to go on the box. So it's just under three inches and I'm going to measure here on my paper on the illustrations right about three inches. I'm going to do one on the bottom, one in the middle, and one in the top. And this will give us an area and a little kind of guideline where we can put the ruler down and then make a nice clean line with a rotary cutter. Very simple. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side and then you can do the bottom and the top as well if you would like. So you have a bigger choice, uh, you know, variety of which piece you want to use. Now, I'm using this dark gray because Oftentimes when you have a lighter background and you put a calendar page down, you can see those black lines through it when you Mod Podge it. So if you go ahead and start off with a dark color or black, you won't be able to see that. Those lines will just disappear. And so that's why I do this. I've done this method many times using the calendar pages and um, this works great for me. I'll put a link down below of some videos that I have done with Dollar Tree calendars. You can get lots of projects, more than 12 projects out of one calendar. Okay, so I've cut a bunch of pieces and I'm just looking to see which ones are going to be my favorite, the ones that I want to feature on this box. And these are the ones I'm going to use. And I have some matte Mod Podge. You can use whatever kind of Mod Podge you want. I won't be putting anything on the top. I'm just going to be using it underneath. And I'm going to kind of go with and against the grain in this box. I'm going to turn it upside down because I can center it better if I can see all the sides instead of just slapping it on the top and then trying to move it around and possibly tearing it. I just put it down like a puzzle piece with the intentional overhang and you'll see how we fix that. So the squeegee works perfect for this project. You can see here we have extras on the edges and we're just going to take that foam sanding block or whatever, you can use an emery board if you have it and just kind of shear that off the edges and you have a nice clean finish. You want to do that on the top, both sides, and also on your bottom. It kind of gets, lets that gray shine through just a little bit on your seams and it's just a really pretty look. We're going to continue around and do the same thing. I don't use a ton of Mod Podge because I don't want bubbles and issues and thankfully with this calendar paper I had no problem at all with bubbles or kind of um, waves you know how you get the little waves in the paper sometimes no problem at all and as you can see you cannot see those dark lines underneath there at all same process on this box on this side of the box just go around and sand it off be careful, you don't want to cut into the paper that is right beside it. Just make sure you get your angle right and you won't have any problems. And this is how it looks when it is completed. Isn't that cute? Oh, and I did go down on the inside a little bit with that gray paint. So, no need to do the bottom. Now I'm going to show you a very easy way to style these. I just have some of these. Um, these were donated to me from my generous benefactor who donated all the supplies to my channel. And these were from, I believe, Michaels. And there are several different kinds that I have you'll be seeing in my projects. And I'm just taking two of my favorite colored ones and putting them down in these boxes so you can get an idea of how this would look. Here's the box that we used the calendar on. The other box that we did using the Dollar Tree rub-on transfers, the spring transfers. 
We're going to start off with the one with the metal top. And I want to cover that because I thought these little pieces of wood chips looked very much like shingles. So I'm going to try my hand at doing shingles. I have three inches here, so I'm just going to divide this into three sections. Just marking it off with my ruler, and then going to turn my ruler to the side so I can make lines to make it easier to guide where I'm gluing down my little shingles. All right, so I'm just going to use hot glue, but if you want this to be permanent or to put it outside, you're going to need to use a different type of glue. Maybe something like E6000 would be good. All right, so I'm just going to show you how I do this. These shingles are not going to fit exactly across the bottom, so I'm going to have to adjust it a little bit, but that is so easily done. They are so very thin that they just split when you press down on them. So I'm holding it from the underneath side and pressing down on the edge of that little um, tin there, and it just snaps right off the perfect measurement. How about that? You could also use popsicle sticks and cut those down if you wanted to, if you had some of the thin ones, and make shingles of your own. Now I'm going to go up to the next line. I'm going to go right under that line because I want to make sure that my shingle overlaps about probably an eighth of an inch over the bottom line. And I'm just going to alternate back and forth so that I have the broken shingle on opposite sides. So then I'm going to glue that one down and continue along going on the top row. I want to make sure that that top row sticks up just a little bit over the peak and then I'm going to start on the other side. Now I use baby wipes with my antiquing wax just to give it more of a, um, I like to use this to distress. So I'm going to use just a downward stroke here and just press that onto the wood and then drag it down. I'm going to do it on both sides and then continue to blend it and push it around until it is the the color and texture that I like. It looks old, it looks like it's been outside, and it looks weathered, and I like that. I love rustic, cottagey, weathered looks. And I think that I accomplished that with this. What do you think? All right, so now I'm gonna embellish it. My cord came from uh, Amazon, but you can get some now at Dollar Tree. I was so surprised. It's in the like the little floral or garden type section. So hopefully you can find some at your store. I think they come in a three pack, um, different types of these little cordings or trims, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just going to trim off here and there where I think it would look good. I didn't want to paint it because I really like the wood that is used on this birdhouse. I like the variation in the light and the dark. And you can see all the rings and lines. I think that's pretty. So there's one piece, and then I looked at it, of course, from all angles, and I'm gonna add some on the bottom and around the sides of the birdhouse. Be careful and make sure you protect your fingers. You can get those little finger protector, little silicone tips at Dollar Tree if you're lucky. I have seen them there every time I've gone, so fortunately my store stays in stock and they really do make a difference. But I got in a hurry and I didn't use them today. All right, so I'm gonna go all the way around and then tack it down in the back, trim off what we don't need. And this is how it looks so far. You could of course leave it just like this if you like it. But I noticed that there's just a tad of a gap, of course, between my shingles and the tin roof that's underneath. So I decided just to use a little bit of jute and cover that gap up. Now what you could do if you have a, like the glue guns that have the little detail tip on them, that would be perfect for this situation. But I don't have that, so I did the best I could with my glue gun, which I've always had, you know, pretty good luck with. And I got a neat finish, besides the fact that that's a really big gun, it does give me a nice little finish. Trim it off on the edges where it's even, and then this is how it's gonna look. I'm cutting off my fuzzies. Some people use a lighter to kind of burn that off. If you feel inclined, you can do that. So these cute little patches, or I don't know, what are these? I don't know what they are, but they're, they're made of thread. I'm gonna use this little bird here to go right over. Like he's sitting out there, peeking in his house. This is so cute. I've been waiting to use these little, little bird patches for a long time, and I think it's a perfect way to use it right here. 
He looks like he belongs there. This is probably think? the easiest one, but it, you know, it does have a little, little something to it. Little technique, little effort. So I'm taking that same watered down antiquing wax and my brush, and I'm just gonna go over the roof. I'm gonna give this a brown top. You don't have to do this, you can paint yours. You could use the solid wax technique like I used on the last birdhouse. You could even shingle this like we did on the first birdhouse. So see, I'm having a hard time here with that wax, so let me show you what I do here in a minute to get that trim nice and colored without flicking that paint all over the rest of my birdhouse because we won't be staining that. We're gonna be painting it and I don't wanna make a mess. Waxy substances do not like to stick to paint so substances. So I'm just gonna take it on my finger and just rub it down into those little cracks. What about that? We're finger painting, y'all. Finger painting. And it does the trick, it does perfectly. I'm going around all the edges of that raw wood there to make sure that it's all covered up. And then the underneath part, we're just gonna use paint for that. So I'm taking this light mocha, use whatever color you like, and three sides of this house and the underneath parts of the roof are all going to be covered with this mocha paint. Hey, if you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel. If you are from Devin's channel, I wanna say a big welcome and thank you for coming over. I have known Devin for quite some time now on YouTube and on Instagram, and that's a hardworking girl right there. She has unique DIYs, and she's such a spiritual person. It's really uplifting to talk to her and follow her journey. So just be sure that as soon as you finish watching mine, you go over there and check her out. Okay, here are some rub-ons that I got from Dollar Tree. They also have a variety of really cute stuff depending on what style you like. And I know that I'm going to be using this, this transfer. I've used it on other projects and I will be using it again. I just kind of get an idea of which section I want to use. And the reason we painted that front part white is because I really want this to stand out. So I like the rose one, the rose section, and I'm going to be working with it. I'm just making sure that I have enough room here to put it on. And then I'm going to take my little cutters here and just cut the little stem off. So the little part where they stand or the perch, I just removed it so that I could lay this straight down. But don't worry, we're gonna put the perch back. We don't want the bird to be confused and not be able to get into its home. All right, I'm using just a regular popsicle stick to rub this down. Don't worry if you did like I just did and pressed it down and made it kind of messy because you can fix it so easily with these stamps or these um, rub-ons. You can't take it off once it gets on there, in my experience anyway, but you can certainly fix it. So what's left on there are a couple of extra leaves and things that didn't transfer. Just overlap wherever you need um, a piece. And look at that, I totally covered up my mistake there. I'm gonna take an awl and just dig down in here and make it flat, clean it up nicely, and decide what kind of perch I wanna use. So I thought, you know what, a little button and a bead would be perfect here. I've glued down the button and now I'm just gluing the little, it's kind of an oval shape oblong, you see there? right down in the middle of the button. And how cute is that? I think that is precious. I'm gonna take my little heat gun here, and it came from Arteza. If anyone is curious, I love it. And I'm going to peel off my sticker. Oh my gosh, game changer, changer for sure, because it saves me a ton of time not having to scrape. This is just a little piece of stuff that I found at Goodwill and I save these because you never know when you might need a base or an extra piece for something, you know? And it's gonna be perfect as a base for this and it's gonna be a little razor or a riser. It's a perfect time to get in your yard, to get on your porch, you know, if it's still snowy where you live, bring some of these things to life in your house. Thanks to all of my subscribers. There's no wrong way of crafting. So we're gonna start off with a little blue truck and this came from Dollar Tree. He didn't have a box, he was all on his lonesome. I have some succulents, also from the Dollar Tree. These are really pretty pastels, and some of this greenery that everybody is loving. This pick and the pick below it came from a Michaels grab box. 
last year. I believe it was around fall. And then I have a variety of thrifted ribbons, some foam from Dollar Tree. We're gonna start off by trimming that foam down so that it will fit in the bed of the truck. We're gonna have to have something to put our flowers into so they don't just flop around. So we will put in some of this foam and it'll stay right where we put it. We're going to start by just pulling apart our picks. I love this frosted looking fern, it's really pretty. And it kind of coordinates with what we had going on in that little frosted pick from Dollar Tree. The greenery bouquet, I think is what they call it. I like to pull these things apart. Uh, it makes it easier for me to kind of visualize where I want everything to go. So I just start by taking things apart, especially in smaller pieces. Sometimes you have to trim it up, cut the wires down, cut off some of the, the limbs and pieces, but you'll see how we do it. Now I'm just going to look here and decide which one of these pieces I want to use. And you can see this is way too big. I still like it though, so I'm going to use this piece. I'm going to trim it down and put it right almost in the center in the back of the truck. That's going to be our tallest point. And then we're going to work around it. I don't want to use pieces that are too large because they're going to overwhelm the little truck and you won't be able to see it. So we just want to kind of accentuate. Now my foam didn't fit in there as tightly as I thought it would, so it's moving a little bit. Just use a little hot glue and it will hold it in place. If you put your glue in first, then you can just put it on the bottom and plop your foam down right on top. All right, so I went to the back corner and I'm going to the other back corner. Just trying to eyeball those and see if they're about the same. Then I'm gonna go here in the front, right kind of toward the side and start adding in greenery pieces here and there. I don't want this to look exactly symmetrical, but I am doing, you know, one up, one down, you know, trying to get a little balance without everything being matchy-matchy on the sides. This is more of a, a cottagey feel, so it has a little more of a wild flair. It's not really an organized style, kind of like you maybe would see these if they were growing wild in nature. Now, if you cut down a pick, but you don't have the right size, of stem underneath it or length of stem, you can cut off a piece from another another um, floral or another pick and just use a little bit of wire and just attach it together and, and make a pick. Simple, right? I do that a few times in this project. So I'm gonna add in my pinks now, my pretty little pink flowers. And you see this is just way too big, way too big for what's going on with this truck. So I just cut it down and I'm gonna add a little piece of that wire, leftover wire pick, just like that. Now I have a nice little piece that's firm enough to push into the foam without making everything collapse. Cause you know, if you try to put floppy plastic into that foam, it's, it's just not gonna work for you. So this fern to me was just way too big. It was out of balance. So I'm just going to trim it down and with these plastic pieces, that's the beauty of it. You can just manipulate it and make it look exactly like you like it. So that's what I've done here and made my own little pick the size that I needed it. I'm gonna put that in there. And of course, always look at it from top, bottom, all sides to make sure that you have everything where it should be, that you don't have any holes or gaps in there. You want it to be nice and, and full. All right, so now we're gonna start with the little embellishments. I like these. So I've chosen these because I thought they would make cute little signs to kind of have a stake and be in the back of the truck. Almost like we're advertising that we're selling flowers from this truck. So I'm cutting these down. These calendars have so many good uses. You can use the little ones off the back. You can use the pages on the inside to make pieces. Ugh, I've done so many videos with calendar pages. They just have the prettiest artwork. So I wanna make this a little bit stronger and it's just on regular, you know, thin paper. So I'm just making it a little bit stronger and I'm gonna add a little pick to the back and you can use whatever kind of pick you have. You can use one of your greenery picks if you'd like. This is what I had, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this. I'm gonna add some glue and then I'm just gonna cover the back because initially I thought I just wanted to have a sign on one side. So this is what I would do for it. Now to embellishment, I'm taking to embellish it, I am going to take this yellow and beige ribbon, make a little bow, and put on there. 
You can do top bottom. You don't even have to do this if you don't want to. You can leave it off completely if you would like, but I, I like the cottagey feel of it. And I'm gonna put it right in the center underneath the truck. So it's gonna be glued to the sign rather than glued to the pick. And then I decided let's take the other truck or another one of the trucks and put it on the back side. So now I have a double sided sign. That was so simple, wasn't it? So there I've showed you two options. You can do it either way. Because this one was trimmed out, I decided I wanted to, to trim this one to match the other side. I'm gonna use that same yellow ribbon and just this time make a little trim only on the bottom. And trim it off. And there's our little double sign that we can put down in the truck for a little extra something. I think it's really cute. Use whatever flowers, whatever colors you like, but I really like this combination with this little blue truck. So now you see me doing what I do in all of my floral arrangements. I'm looking side to side to see what else I need. And I decided that we could put a little farm fresh sign on the truck. So I'm just taking a piece off of another one of these little calendar um, pictures. And I'm just gonna use the farm fresh off of the Christmas sign. Trimming it down. And we're gonna put this on our truck. You do have options. You could put it across the back of the truck here on the tailgate if you would like. You could put it on the front of the truck or you could put it on one of the doors. And that's what I decided to do here. Kind of on the door and going toward the back of the truck. And this is what it looks like. And can you see what I see? It needed another flower. That's why we look at all angles. Now, isn't that better? Much better. This would be really cute on a tiered tray. If you like doing tiered trays, it would be nice on a desk because it's small and compact. It would be a nice little pick-me-up for a friend or a loved one. It's just a precious little truck. Here is the truck. He's so, so sweet. this time I have a little mason jar. And this one came from Christmas. You can just cut off that little piece there. I'm gonna take my utility knife and score this because I do not want to remove that metal looking top. Even though that's drawn on there, that's actually an applique, I want it to stay there and I don't wanna scrape it off accidentally. And I don't want it to get wet when I do this part. I'm just covering it to protect it, spraying it with some water and then rubbing my hands all over it because it did not wanna peel off easily. You can see I tried to peel it so I decided to wet it down and now I'm using a little, it's like a little chisel tool or a woodworking tool that I happen to have got in a set at Dollar Tree. And I'm just scraping this off. You can sand it too. Whichever way you like to remove it will be absolutely fine. So once that is done, it's clean and dry, you can go ahead and paint it. Now this time I'm using a different, um, a different color white. This one is plaster. This has a little bit more of a cream color um, instead of that bright white. I love that and I think it's going to be perfect for this little piece. I'm just going to cover everything except that top. I'm going to leave that there. We're going to set it aside and let it dry. Now, once it's done, even though it's not perfect, I don't mind that, you can either grab that glue stick or you can use that Mod Podge again. Either way. I'm going to choose which appliques I want to put on it. And this little truck happened to be an almost a perfect fit. No worries, we're going to trim it down. You can cut off the excess. And I also cut the little, you can see there's like a little shadow of mud on the tires. I cut that off as well. Cut it as much as you need to to get it to fit. And look at that, perfect. So now I'm going to lay down a layer of Mod Podge all over where I'm going to be putting my little appliques and then put them where they need to go. I'm going to use two. So I'm going to use this little honk if you're Irish and the happy St. Patrick's Day banner that was on there. Now it's going to be trimmed down quite a bit to fit but that's okay you know that's easy to do and then you can just keep laying it down looking at it eyeballing it and trimming it till you get it exactly the right size to go on yours. And then once it's down, same process, we're gonna take some more Mod Podge and lock it in place. Now 
It wasn't that easy and so cheap. Once it is dry, I'm going to take a little bit of this. This is like a kind of a lacy trim piece. Uh, it's made out of like burlap that my husband bought from Amazon. He bought it in a pack. And I thought this cream color looked really nice with this. So I'm just gonna glue it on the back and then add a dot of glue on the front to hold it in place. Now, if you wanna add something extra, take one of your extra shamrocks from the earlier project and just glue it on here. But I think it's perfect just the way it is. But you do you and make it perfectly you. I love the little jar. I think it's so cute. There are times when you can find these at Dollar Tree, but they usually I'm attempting glaze. to make a glaze here. I'm using some gloss Mod Podge and some King's Gold. Gonna shake them up. Gonna use more of that Mod Podge and just a little bit of that really strongly pigmented gold there. Gonna mix it up. You can add some brown to it to make it look more like a, the brown of honey, whichever one you want to do. But this was an experiment for me, so I think in the end it turned out good. Mix it up really well, and then I'm going to use a fine little tip brush here to go just along all around where that hot glue is. I'm not coloring my spoon with it because I want this to look like, to some extent, it should represent honey, right? It takes a few coats so that you don't have brush marks in here anymore, but be sure that you let it dry nicely between each This coat. shouldn't even be a DIY, but I did do it myself, so I guess it qualifies. So these little candles came from Dollar Tree. I grabbed them knowing I could use them for these bee projects. Take a little piece of ribbon and go around the neck of each one of these. On this one, I'm going to use the gold and I'm going to use that black and white that I already had. How about that? I'm going to wrap this one around and I'm going to tie it very simply. You can use a dot of glue to hold that there in place if you need to and then tie a double knot. I'm going to tuck underneath a little piece of greenery. You can go ahead and use the same that you used in the, the planter or the, um, the watering can if that's what you want to do. But I thought this yellow would be really pretty with this gold ribbon. So I just went ahead and used it. It's just a scrap. I keep all my little scraps and baskets and bowls and I just use them again. And I'm just tying two bows, one on top of the other one. Because they're so small, I couldn't tie them all at once. So I just tied them one on top of the other, and they're overlapping. See how that's sticking out? All you got to do is use a little drop of hot glue under the end, and it'll glue straight down. Look at that. And there's the third one. I want you to try these projects. I believe in you. There's something to me so relaxing and joyous about crafting and be in, just being expressive through your own crafting. You don't have to be just like anybody else. You don't have to do just like it's on the back. Else. I got it at the thrift store and it needs a little love and I know exactly what I want to do to it. Always start by cleaning your supplies that you get from the Dollar Tree and then from any place really if you think that you're going to be painting it because you don't want to leave little residue of wax and things like that which is what was on here. So maybe somebody used it as a candle holder but they hid the beautiful bee. So we're gonna do something better to it. And I'm just using a little wipe here, it's say an alcohol wipe, and I'm just gonna use it and rub off that tag too. I'm gonna use some satin blossom white Rust-Oleum paint and spray it down outside and give it two good coats. And so this is how it looks. The back, I don't like so much. I think I'm gonna paint it black but I know around the edges I'm gonna use black. I tried a marker originally and the marker looked awful, so I touched it up and then going back over it with a makeup sponge. So I'm just gonna get some black chalkboard paint. I think I got it from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna go around the edge here with my makeup sponge, just tapping it off a little bit so that it doesn't leave any run over on the sides there and onto the top because I want it to look nice and clean. This is so easy. This was easier than using a marker so I do recommend using this technique if you want to try to do the enamel look. I think this is cute. I love this little bee dish. Alright so after I do that I do go ahead and paint the back and then I allow it to dry. See there? Nice, that looks better. 
Now I'm going to take my antiquing wax here and a chippy brush. I'm going to tap off a lot of that. And then I'm going to focus in the crevices around this bee dish. Now, like all the indentions and the, um, you know, the outline, I guess I should say, of this bee. I want to work that in there because I want to leave some shadow and some dimension that you don't otherwise see in the dish as we had it originally. But you can leave it that way. So I'm just wiping it back a little bit, and that's just a dry sock that I'm repurposing that didn't have a match. You know, the dryer likes to eat those things. And then I'm just going to tap some down in there and lightly rub back over until I get the finish that I like. The idea is not to have the entire dish looking antique, but rather to have the indention shown up. Be sure to follow me on my social media. You can find me on Pinterest. This Instagram. beautiful little... I guess this is a vase. I found it at Dollar Tree. So pretty. I took the little embellishment off. This is a little thrifted cork light, but you can use any type of fairy lights that you have. Doesn't have to be this. I'm going to use a little wood bead. I have a little, um, I guess it's a candle holder that's going to help me hold things in place while I work. I'm going to use some jute, and this is some thick jute. I'm going to sit it down in there and protect my fingers and we're going to begin to make a top for this so that it doesn't look like a glass vase anymore. So I'm just putting my protected finger in the center and then just kind of working around adding the glue where I need it. It looks kind of oval right now but you know it's fixed. In the end, it's fixed. You can overlap it. You can make this as thick as you want to make it. And I do actually, after I get it wrapped around as flat as I can get it on the flat part, I do go over that little ridged area there and then onto the part that goes down that would be like the base area. It's just a, maybe a couple of centimeters, but I do wrap that up as well because this will look more like a topper than just you know, a little bit of rope wound up on the bottom. You can see how I went over the edges, like that. And you can just wipe off some of that glue. It's gonna come out of your jute. Just wipe it off. It's real easy to remove. Just wanna make it look nice and neat. Then I'm gonna take my bead and put it in the center. This is how it's looking so far. I love that the amber color of this vase and it just looks like it reminds me of like a beehive so I thought this is definitely what I want to use it for so I'm also going to do this area and cover that completely up and this is easy to do I should have been protecting my fingers so I would be a good example for everybody but uh, I was running with the you know how it is when you get that little spark and you just you get the ideas running and, and you just go for it. That's kind of what I was doing here with this one. So once you get enough on there, you can trim it off. You don't want to cover the lip because it might not sit flat. Again, with our antiquing wax, I'm going to add a little bit there on the bottom and just kind of take a very stiff, also like a chippy brush, but it's a, um, it's a stencil brush. And I'm going to use a little bit at a time to build up the color that I want. I want the color to match sort of what's going on in the beehive um, as far as the, the depth of the tone. I don't want to get it super dark. And if I used a regular paintbrush and just went full force, it would turn this a waxy brown color. And that is not what I'm going for. I just want it to look as though it is aged. And I want it to blend nicely with what is going on in the glass. So we're going to go down to the bottom, or what used to be the top, and work on that too. Just going back and forth and stippling. And that glue is really holding well on this glass. And so this is the color I think I like. Very pretty. But you can continue to add as much as you want for this. And I did see one of these little vases in Dollar Tree a few days ago, so you can find them. So now the idea here... I'm going to use just a tiny bit of glue in the opening to hold down my little control so that it stays in place when I put it on the base that I've created. So you can use a little piece of wood, a little round wood. You could sit it back in that little vase or candle holder over there if you'd like. You can use it just like this. 
and that just gives you an idea how that would look or you can use like a, a candle topper like an um, old candle topper topper <laughs> or a jar top like a jar lid and I really like this aged one this is one that's been through the dishwasher a few times and the edges are very aged but it doesn't have the color that I want so in order to give it a more rustic or a more aged look I'm gonna take that same antiquing wax and I'm gonna go around all of the edge get in every one of those little cracks there every one of those little indentions right down into the lip where it curls over and then all over the top you can let your wax sit after you get it on there and let it dry a little bit and then wipe it back and that will give you a little more of an aged look and if you like this look you certainly don't have to wipe it back at all but you will need to let it dry before you continue with your project but for purposes of the video so I can help you to understand I am going to wipe this back and leave see how it sinks down into the indentions I love that I just I love that even though I'm transitioning more to a cottage look I, I have to have some rustic in there somewhere how adorable is this is that not the cutest thing I believe in you I really do and I know that you could do something like this and it'll be so amazing y'all keep in mind my goal is 15,000 subscribers by August the 1st so if you're watching this video and you really love budget-friendly DIYs and you like the style in this video and the links that I will be leaving for you please consider subscribing and joining the family and helping me on my goal I would we're gonna start with the little house and we're gonna just press down on this and it will pop right out it is covered with a paper so you want to be sure that you clean that off of the back of your house and scrape it off and then if you gently scrape you can get the paper off without having to paint the bottom so it's like there's a print on the top and like a papery backing and I was able to save that so that I don't have to worry about painting and waiting for the paint to dry but you can take yours completely off and just paint it with some white chalk paint dry it and it'll be perfect so I scraped a little too hard here I got a little spot but I'm going to show you how to fix that. Just take an acrylic paint marker or a paint pen, dot it on there, and then I'm going to take a napkin and just blot it off. And that covers it up nicely. And the reason we want to do that is because you'll be able to see through this one ply of napkin. We do separate these two ply napkins into one ply. We have less wrinkle in that way, so that's the way we're going to do it. I'm going to use a glue stick here. And put this all the way on here a nice full coverage so that it will adhere down flat you can use Mod Podge or something else if you would like but you got to be really careful because the napkins are so fragile that they will tear so just keep that in mind if you're going to use Mod Podge or like um, a school glue for this I'm going to gently place it down where I want it and then pat it down again this is really really thin I'm gonna use my little Mod Podge roller here and just make sure that I press out any wrinkles or bubbles that might be in there inevitably there are going to be some projects where you just get some bubbles lines or wrinkles and that's okay too so you can pull your edges off like this or you can just take a sanding block I get mine at Dollar Tree and just sand those down and it gives it a nice clean edge like it was painted on here and that's the look, the look that I, I'm kind of going for see with that nice white backing it makes those beautiful colors of this napkin really pop and I chose the popsicles because of summer but you can choose any any napkins that you would like and apply that to any of these projects I'm going to use some hot glue and flip that down on the back put it right back in its original place and press it down you can paint the edge of the box if you would like you can embellish it with stickers or whatever you would like I'm gonna make a little bow to go in the top I just feel like it needs a little extra something up there it's kinda cutesy it's not the look for everybody but like I've said before I like to give you options and then you can do whatever you want to do with yours this is just for inspiration so this is a little simple shoelace bow I bump the camera 
and then I'm just going to trim those tails down where they won't be in the way of our little popsicles. There's some really pretty summer napkins out right now. They have some that are fruit also, like watermelons and lemons, all kinds of pretty ones. But you can think further into the season for fall. You can use fall napkins for these projects and just change up your colors a little bit. And that would be fine too. This is an easy way to take a $1.25 package of napkins and make a lot of decor. We're going to get five pieces and then there's actually more that you could do with this. So I decided once looking at this from all angles, like you know we do, that I wanted to add something extra on the outside. So I could have painted it. But I have this ribbon that fits almost perfectly. I had to just take a little bit off of the edge and then it was a perfect fit for the outside of this. And it almost looks like we painted it plaid. So whatever colors, if you like this, whatever colors that are going to coordinate with your napkin, you can use to put on the outside of your little house. Just going to use a little bit of glue here and put this ribbon down. I only glue it on the bottom when I started it and at the end. So I just kind of pull it tightly so that it won't slip around. Hold it in place and glue it down. And this would be easy to remove at another time if I wanted to use this box again for something. Another money saving tip. And we're going to start by taking it apart. We're going to take the back off. Just use those little prongs to remove it. And then I'm going to take these beads off because I'm going to use something else. So you can pull them off with pliers or your hands. I start to try to get the paper off here with this little tool that I use all the time. But then I realized it can pretty much be pulled off by hand. But I couldn't get it all the way off. So here's another option. Grab your chalk paint. Just go right over the top of it. You don't want to be there all day long trying to peel it. And then let it dry. So I decided I want to paint the outside and I'm going to use some of this orange, this pumpkin chalk paint. Using chalk paint because it dries fast, but see, there's orange in there and I think that will look cute. So if you like a little more color in your summer decor and you don't want to leave everything just a wood finish, you can use chalk paint on here. I did use two coats. I went on the inside and the outside as well as you're seeing so that it's nice and finished. Then I'm going to take my napkin, I'm going to tear the edge so I can separate my plies. I wanted to show y'all how to do that because it's really not that difficult. And then see how I want to place it. Again with the glue stick, going to give it nice good coverage. And then I'm going to find my placement and then press it down. I'm not rubbing it right there with my hand because I don't want anything to come off. So just gently placing it and then I'm going to use the roller. If you make a mess up on this and you tear it when you're trying to clean it up or trying to press it down, while that glue stick is still wet, you can pull that off of there. I've done that before. So you can pull your edges off or again you can use a little sanding block and go around the edges. That just really pops on that white. I love that. And then this orange looks really nice with it. Very summery, I think. Maybe this could go on a back porch if you have a pool party. It would be really cute. So I'm going to take a variety of beads. These are just thrifted, but you can get beads at Dollar Tree in all different colors. And I decided I wanted to make a little pattern with these plastic and wooden beads. The little teal or the uh, aqua beads here, those are actually plastic. But the other ones are wood. I'm going to slip it on this yellow and white twine, Baker's twine that I got from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to, to tie a few knots. Now the type of knot you make is not important as long as it is a fat enough knot that your bead won't slide off of it just like that. And you can secure it with a little bit of glue if you would like. Now you don't need to see me do the whole thing, but you see here I have a pattern. Blue, pink, and white. Once you get to the end and you have as many as you would like, tie it off. I'm going to add some hot glue right into this bead because it's a bigger diameter and I just know that knot's going to slip. And so here's my little strand of beads and I'm going to put my colorful beads back on this sign. You could also paint the bead you already have 
if you wanted to use those. I'm just going to put them aside for another project because I know I will be using those in another project on another day. So I'm going to use some hot glue. I'm just going to kind of put these back in a similar position as to where they were in the first place and then cut off the excess. And this is what we're that little, take this little bank like. and remove the backing. I bought this a while back, but I'm still seeing it in my store every time I go in. It's just a piece of paper. We're going to take it off since the glass won't come out. I'm trying to decide, is it in the front or the back? Well, it's on the inside. The print is right there. So I'm going to take my scraper here and gently, gently scrape this away. You can use Goo Gone. You can use fingernail polish remover. You can use whatever you would like, but I didn't want any of that substance making a nasty mess on the sides of my little bank here. So this was the best option. I'm going to use an alcohol wipe and just clean up the front. And then on the inside, I'm going to clean that up as well. And those little black pieces go everywhere. It's not vinyl, it's something else, like chipped fingernail polish and it's, it took me a while to get it all out. Going back to that poster board scrap, I'm gonna trace out the square so that we know we have exactly the right size to go on the inside. So this is what it's gonna be, trimmed all out. And once we get our little square, that's gonna be perfect. We're gonna divide our napkins, plies, and see how it fits nicely on there? Pretty much all of the signs, um, any of the ones that you choose are gonna fit. Maybe even the picture frames that are four by fours, maybe, I don't know, they may be too small. Don't quote me on that. Okay, so this time we're gonna leave the word in there. I'm gonna decide where I want it. I can pull slightly before I press it down. And then I'm going to roll it out. I know I've showed this in every one, but it's just very important to get a high-end look, to really think of those extra things that you can do to make it look like it's painted on there rather than a napkin glued to something. I mean, that's not what we're trying to achieve, right? We're not trying to let everybody in who sees our products or our designs go, oh, that's a napkin. Isn't that clever? Well, I don't anyway. I might tell somebody that, but I don't want them to just automatically know it. I want it to look like it's painted. And doesn't that look painted? I think so. All right, so I'm getting some double stick tape here. I found mine at Dollar Tree. You can get yours there. And I'm just going to tack down little pieces here and there in the corners. And that'll be enough to hold this to the backing of the bank. So again, finding the placement and then pressing it down. It's got a really good hold too. You don't want to be lifting it up afterwards. So get it right the first time, right? All right, gonna lock it back into place. And this is what it looks like. If you like it like this, you could certainly give it to your children, let them put some summer money in there. Maybe the ice cream truck comes, so they need a little, little extra money. They can put it in there. Or you can use it for a piece of decor, which is what I'm going to do. And just add in some beads that are the same color, maybe that you used in your other project. Put it in there. You could use beads. You could use little um, table scatter balls. You could use uh, little miniature erasers if you found them in fruit or popsicle type shapes. That would be really cute too. And now I've got a little shaker box. And it just gives it a little extra something, I think. It gives you an option. This would be cute on a tiered tray if you have a tall tiered tray. Dollar General has nice things. You know, get some stuff on clearance after the season. Put them back for the next year if you got space. Really save your money, but make some really cute seasonal pieces for pennies. This is Dollar Tree stickers. I got them in the crafter section. You can get yours anywhere you can find them. I thought these were perfect. When I saw them, I was inspired to do this project. There are 96 stickers in there. I've got some little wood blocks. I also have some tower blocks in case you don't have them and also some thrifted little um, scrabble pieces if you need them. So I'm going to cut this border off to make it smaller and test it out and see which one of these is going to be the best option. So now I have just the little face on the little chocolate bar and it fits absolutely 
perfectly onto that square. There's just a little bit of overhang, but I'll show you how to fix that shortly. So if you don't have any paint, this is an option for you. Go ahead and use your little stickers, and there's a chocolate bar, a graham cracker, and marshmallow, and there are several different faces to choose from. The marshmallow is a little bit bigger. It's kind of rounded on the sides and the bottom, so just be aware he's gonna have to have a little more trimming down than the other ones. And you can do it all over if you want to, but I wanted to test it out with just doing around the sides and not using anything in the top or the bottom. So again, if you have no paint, you could do it just like this. You can use some Mod Podge or double stick tape to help it stay in place if you would like. I decided to try mine with a white top and a white bottom and then stickers around the four sides. And I like this better. So I'm just using some of my chalk paint here to, to paint this up, but you can use acrylic or whatever you have. And again, you don't, if you don't have paint, you don't have to worry about it. Just to make sure that my stickers stay in place for a long time, I'm using some of this glue stick. And don't worry about the purple, it does disappear when it's dry. And I'm just gonna face these all in the same direction. So each one of these little stickers will be facing outward so that if they were sat on the bottom, you could see all the faces in the correct position. Sorry about the focus there, just trying to focus on the background, set of my hand. And then again on each side. So what I have is a white bottom, a white top. I have two graham crackers, a chocolate, and a marshmallow. Just like when you build your own s'mores. So if you have some sharp scissors, you can trim those around to make them fit perfectly and have no overhang. And that's what they'll look like when they are all done. Aren't they cute? There's so many options with these two. This just could be a base idea for you. Perfect for a tiered tray, I think. I'm gonna use some thrifted Scrabble blocks, but you can get these at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna show you a little trick so that you can paint these without, even though I have paint all over my hands, with as little mess as possible. Just use a tiny dot of glue, put it down on a piece of cardboard or some leftover paper or whatever you have here, scraps, and then just paint on the face. And then that way you can face, you can paint all the way around the edges too, and you don't get it all over your fingers and you don't keep having to repaint every place that you touch where it, you know, kind of lifts up the paint. So just a little dot and it'll hold it in place. And it works really great too for in the end when you are drying everything. They won't move around and scoot all over the table. So I have a little drying tool here, but you can use a blow dryer, you can use a fan, or you can just wait for these to dry on your own. Once they're dry, we can apply the stickers. These stickers do have a white border, um, as you noticed in the other picture. But we don't have to do a lot of trimming here, except on this little marshmallow, and then a little bit on the other ones. It's kind of rounded on the sides, so we're just gonna cut the rounded sections off and it'll fit right down on here. The reason I painted these white is because I want them to stand out. And I think this is a perfect way to do it. Although the marshmallow kind of blends right in. I love these little faces, these are so cute. Have you seen these at your Dollar Tree? I was very surprised because it doesn't look like a Greenbrier ba uh, brand. Look at those faces, those are so cute. So now they're down, they're dry, they are stuck down. And I decided that I'm going to use some more of those Scrabble pieces to spell out, to spell out s'more. Or s'mores, whatever you want to do here. And then decide how I want to do it. Do I want to do a double strand? Do I want to do a single strand? What pattern do I want to use with my little faces here? And then what kind of string are we going to use to hang it? So I've got some options and I think I'm going to go with this jute here. Just my preference, you can use whatever type of cording or jute colored twine, whatever you have. I've put this on my cutting board because it is like a silicone base. So if glue gets on there, it'll peel off rather than it sticking down to the paper, my crafting paper that is on my table. So this just keeps my workspace nice and tidy and it peels away very easily. I'm pressing that down. I put a little hot glue on the top of each one of the letters and then I'm pressing the rope into it. Now I had this on my cool temperature, so no worries, but protect your fingers. And then I'm gonna start adding on the little Q 
cute sticker faces. And you can do whatever, you know, whatever pattern you like here, whichever way you like it. And certainly you don't have to do one of each. You could do all marshmallows if you wanted to or, you know, whatever you like. But I think this is a cute pattern. You can also oh, add beads. see is me painting these blocks. So I have two light, I have two blocks that are painted in a lighter color, brown. I have a white block, and I use my chalk paint for that. And then I have a darker color brown, which is like a teddy bear brown. That's gonna represent our chocolate. So we have one graham cracker, one marshmallow. We're gonna add the chocolate, and then we're gonna add one more graham cracker on the top. Now what I'm doing is just squishing this down so that my block is flat and it, it appears to be more like one piece instead of a bunch of gaps and I don't want glue to come out. So that's why I did it this way. You can see it sliding around. I'm just trying to square it up here. Not a big deal if you don't. Pull them apart and fix it if you need to. And this is what it's gonna look like. A little s'more. So I'm gonna put a bow on the top. For those of you who like bows, if you don't wanna do it that way, you can certainly try any other little technique you wanna to use to doll it up. I'm gonna double over this twine. And this was in the Shore Living, I think it's called. Um, it's the little beachy section of Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna double it up and make a simple little bow, little shoestring bow with it. Fluff it around pull them out like I like them and because it has a little burlap it does have some stiffness in it which I like because you can kind of work with those little loops and they'll stay where you want them to stay I cut apart the section that had the little um, that was doubled up so that I would have equal tails on both sides and then I'm gonna add some glue in the middle and put it right on the top of our little s'more And there you go. You know, you always gotta fluff that bow right onto your trays. So I think this is something that you can use now and you can carry it on through and use it for other holidays and seasons. Using whatever type of popsicle stick you have, and mine are just about the standard size, the little crab sticks. I'm gonna use two for the legs and I'm gonna cut one into three pieces. And these are gonna be the rungs of the ladder. I'm just using my little, um, pliers here, my little tools, they cut really well. Somebody told me that they are called bullnose pliers. Uh, feel free to correct me or give your, um, your knowledge. I'd love to have more information on that, but all I know is it is a very good multi-purpose tool. And I got a thrift store, so you know I love it even more. All right, so we're just gonna take the three sections and decide where we want the rungs of the ladder to be. Fix yours however you like. I'm going to put mine three, um, one's going to be almost in the center and then the other two are going to be around and about mm, maybe three quarters of an inch down from the ends. I left the ladder legs round for now, but uh, you know, that's your choice. You can leave them round or you can cut them off and I do cut them off shortly. You can leave it plain like this. You can take some antiquing wax and color it or stain it. You can paint it any color you like. You could do black if you wanted to. Whatever you like. I went ahead and cut the bottoms off thinking that I might want to keep the round sections. And I just went over it with my plaster chalk paint. I used plaster instead of bright white. Plaster just seems to me more like a marshmallow color. So I thought it was fitting. I'm gonna go over, all over this. You could use a little glue on the back to paint it as well if you wanted to, but I got in a rush. I'm drying it all off now. And then I'm gonna take my sanding block and I'm gonna rough it up and distress it a bit. So I'm just turning it at an angle, like a 45 degree angle, and just kind of taking off the paint on the edges of the pieces. And of course, on the feet, that's where they would normally get where, you know, where you put them down. And so I'm looking at it and trying to decide, yeah, I think I want to take the roundness off. Realistically, you wouldn't have a ladder this small, but if it was a big ladder, you wouldn't have round feet. I don't believe that would be safe. So I'm just knocking those off, making them nice and flat. Last fall, what do you think? Very easy, these come from the Dollar Tree. And you can get them in a variety of backgrounds. I am just going to be painting this section 
with that same plaster chalk paint. This does not have to be neat because it's going to be covered. I went to Canva and printed out some s'mores. And I do have Canva Pro now, so I am loving that. I get all kinds of goodies and I don't have to search all over the internet for them. I'm just going to trim two different sizes. I printed off two different sizes of the same s'more. And it's gonna fit nicely on here. So I wrapped some burlap just on the front side of there after the paint's dry. I'm gonna press it down into the frame. If I do it this way, I don't have to burn my fingers or risk making a mess with the glue. It's just not even necessary for this project. I'm just gonna press it in there and then use some really sharp scissors and trim all of that off. Be careful, don't wanna to try to cut your scissors over those little, those little hook pieces there because they will dull your blades down. They are metal. Press them back down. I'm just securing my little strand of beads on the top and I'm gonna look at my placement. I'm gonna use these little tower blocks to give them some dimension and raise them up off of the burlap. I love doing this and I do it with a lot of my projects. Feel free to leave this flat if you would like to put it right down on your burlap. It'll stick down just fine. But I'm going to raise mine up a little bit. It just makes it different, you know? It makes it unique. I make it my own, so you make it your own. Oh, I love s'mores. Do y'all like s'mores? And do you, have you tried the new thing where you put the Reese's peanut butter cup on instead of the Hershey's? I've heard that's good and I love Reese's. Just wondering if it's worth it. I bet it is. All right, so now to add a little extra something to it, I'm gonna take these stickers that I've had for a while. I do not know where they came from, but you can use any stickers that you find and certainly Dollar Tree has a lot of alphabet stickers that you can use. And I'm just going to put the word s'more on here. I start off with just putting s'more and then I decide maybe I should add an S since there are two in the frame. And my little eight-year-old daughter is trying to teach me grammar and she told me that it needed an S. So thank you very much. So there we go. And I'm going to leave the beads the way they are but you could paint them if you wanted to. I started I think off with actually. it being kind of a large sign but I do cut it down. I'm going to cut this paint stick right underneath where the curve is. And I'm just measuring to make sure that I cut it straight across. And I'm going to use those same pliers to cut it down. I know you can't see very well right now, but I'm taking a little nip into each side and then I'll cut further in. If the wood splits when you do this, um, in my experience, it will go right back together. So don't be too worried, but you cut it any way that you want to cut it. You can score it, you can cut it with anything you have. All right, I'm using my sanding block and I'm gonna smooth down that edge. And this will end up being about, I think maybe nine inches. I'm gonna go ahead and take that same plaster chalk paint, that marshmallow color that I like so much. And I'm going to paint the whole stick this color. This is going to be like a base layer, but it is also going to represent the marshmallow when we hand paint the s'more. So I'm gonna go all the way to the end. I'm not worried about the edges. It's really not any concern, but you can if you want. Make sure that it is dry between putting on your layers. I'm gonna take those same browns. I'm gonna take a little slanted brush here and I'm going to start with my chocolate layer. Now you can do it however you want to, but I think this is a great chocolate color. Keeping in mind right above this line is where the cracker layer is going to be. So that part is going to be pretty flat. You know, crackers are kind of flat. But when the chocolate starts to melt, it's going to dip and run over onto the marshmallow layer, which is going to be under here. So I'm adding some waves to make this look like the chocolate has melted down into the marshmallow layer. And you can just make this however you want. You can leave your straight if you would like, but I like the idea of a gooey, yummy s'more. So I'm gonna quickly just dry that layer. It is acrylic paint, so it takes just a little bit longer to dry. Then I'm gonna flip it over and do a graham cracker line. This is just gonna be pretty much a straight line, as straight as I can get it here. 
just like if you were looking at a snore. This part's pretty easy. And actually the entire thing was pretty easy. If you just have in your mind what a graham cracker looks like, and hey, if you don't and you can't imagine it, just pull up a picture on your phone. Just Google an image and then you can just go from there. All right, so I'm gonna leave the section somewhat in the middle. That's gonna be our marshmallow. The reason this other graham cracker line looks kind of wavy is because the marshmallow has melted onto it. So you see, does that make sense to you? So now you kind of get the idea of a melted marshmallow and chocolate layer overlapping onto our crackers. And that's how it looks. You know, if you did this with red and pink, it would look like a strip of bacon, wouldn't it? Okay, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of my jute and wrap it around one end. And I do um, glue it down in the back. And then I made the decision to cut this thing in half. I actually tried to do this um, large. You could leave it large and write something on it if you wanted. But it was just a little too big for the simplicity of what I wanted to write on it. So I just cut it in half, sanded that little section down, and then I'm just going to freehand the word s'mores. Now this is kind of, I know you can't see it very well, and I do apologize for that, but it will, it will clear up and you'll be able to see it. I don't have the best handwriting, so if you have a Cricut and you want to use that, you can. You could use those same stickers from that sticker sheet that you used before, and you could put it on there with stickers. But I just want you to be confident with whatever you have, because if you don't have alphabet stickers, you don't have to give up on your project. You know, just go and write it in there any way you want. Very easy. And you don't have to write anything on yours. You could leave it just like this. You could make two of these. You could put them together and make a set of tags to hang off your tiered tray. Whatever you would like to do. I'm just going in and adding some little dots on both of the edges. This is a black marker that I'm using. I think it's my black Arteza, um, one of my black Arteza markers, the fine point. See, not bad. And then because S'mores make us so happy. I added a little smiley face. But you can leave that off, of course. I was practicing my handwriting on the back of the stick, you can see. Now we gotta make a stand, so I'm just gonna use one little block, a little hot glue. Now you can and find little signs stand. like this at Dollar Tree or little picture frames, whichever way, um, all the time. Mine are thrifted. I'm gonna use three different color trims. I'm going to have a graham cracker color, a chocolate color, and a marshmallow color. So I'm gonna cut two pieces that need to be just long enough to wrap around the back to represent our crackers. And I'm gonna put the first layer down, which is going to be my cracker. Just a little bit of glue on the back and wrap it around and making sure, you know, that it's fairly straight. Well, it would be fairly straight across the front. So you turn it over, you can see. And if it's not, while the glue's still wet, you can adjust it. So this beautiful brownish bronze color is going to be our chocolate level layer. And I'm going to add some hot glue here and put it right next to the layer that is above it. Very easy, but you need to protect your fingers, remember. We don't want to burn our fingers because then we can't craft. This is going to be a marshmallow layer. By the way, you can color your own. Um, I know that you can get these little trims. Two of mine came from Amazon. One of those came from the thrift store, but I know that you can get them at Dollar Tree now, and if you don't have the right colors, you can dye them with tea or with coffee. You can also paint them if you would like, but it gives a lot of texture, and I really like that about this project. It's the texture of it. You know, this is, it's gonna represent a graham cracker. Does it look exactly like one? No, it does not. But I think it's really pretty and I like the little, I like the textural element. So I'm going to use some more of this little jute and twine rope here and I'm going to go underneath so we don't have any hot glue on the front. So I'm just going to use a little skewer thing, a little mini skewer and go right underneath and then I'm going to tie it into a little bow. I'm not going to pull it tight but you certainly can do that if you want to. And I'm just gonna make two little loops 
wrap the loops around each other and tuck one of them on the inside. And now you can just pull the tails to adjust the size of your loops to get it the size that you like. If you want to leave that part off, you can. So I also printed this off from Canva. I'm going to cut these little pieces into like tags. Just cutting off the ends, once they're rectangles, you know, just cut the ends off and then it looks like a tag. And I'm gonna do the same thing with happiness. We could all use a little more happiness, couldn't we? Yes, we could. And you could, you could do some more joy, some more happiness, some more kindness, some more love, some more summer. Anything that you want to do that gives you a little positive message to look at. I think that happiness is good. I use joy a lot. So I switched it up this time. And I like it right there. So I'm going to add just a little hot glue on the back. And then stick it, kind of tuck it right underneath the loops of the bow. And now we have this little precious s'more happiness sign. And it has its own little kickstand. So you're going to use some beads. You can use any old white bead you have or you can use any bead that you can paint. I got these little skewer sticks. I'm going to use the uh, plaster paint. And then I have, um, I decided I wanted to use these because they look to me more like a marshmallow. The shape of a marshmallow. So I'm just going to add some glue in here on my cool temperature just to kind of fill the bead up. And because the inside of the bead is much longer than the diameter of the skewer stick we're putting in there, I need to build it out a little bit so that the stick will stay toward the center. I'm just going to twist it in there to make sure that the glue is everywhere it needs to be. And I'm not concerned with the glue on the tip or what is underneath. We're not going to worry about that because it does add to the look. Um, you know, if you've roasted marshmallows before, you know good and well that it slides up and down that stick and makes a little bit of a gooey mess. So we're just going to work with that. I'm going to add a little bit on the top. And then you can set it aside to dry. I just had mine sitting in a tape spool so it would stay upright. We're going to do the same thing on this one. Place it in there toward the center. Now to paint it, I'm going to put it in a piece of foam, a little styrofoam. And then I'm going to just paint all over the marshmallow. I want to go around the edges, go underneath the edge, go over the top, go over the edge of the stick, just where, you know, a marshmallow would melt. I'm getting underneath the bottom so that you don't we don't see any of that brown under there. And then you can let this dry or you can add to your stick. I'm going to use just the tiniest amount of antiquing wax on these sticks to make them look like they've been outside, maybe even been whittled down from a stick when you go camping or maybe found in the woods somewhere. You can skip this part if you would like. If you don't have antiquing wax, you can use coffee to stain it or you can use paint. I'm gonna go right around the bottom and then we're gonna dry them. This part, they need to be good and dry because we're gonna add just a little bit of streakiness from what was left on that brush all over that marshmallow. This is gonna make it look like it was roasted. It's going to give it that yummy, brown crispness. Uh, who wants a s'more right now? If you don't want one after you watch this video, then you just must have an aversion to marshmallows. Is all I can say. Because I know I want some. Look at that. Doesn't that look realistic? I mean, you know, as far as crafting goes, that's pretty good. Now, this is a little thrifted piece. I don't even know. It's some type of a log or some old coral or something. Came with some beachy stuff. You can just stick those sticks down in that hole, just like that. If you don't have something like that, you can use a little clay pot with some foam in it. You could glue it down onto any stick you find in the yard, whatever you got. I'm gonna cut these at two different lengths, and I'm just gonna poke them down in here. I'm not even gonna glue them. And they are ready for the next camper. All right, so I'm gonna give you two tray options here. The first one is a tear tray. This is a Target tray that I got on clearance for $2.50. There is two different little white trays and it has gold trim. You can paint yours whatever you want because the plates come off. You can actually use them for desserts. I love that about this. Very easy options here. Now there are some more of those little s'more stickers on the ladder. 
wanted to make it look a little more cohesive. I like this, very simple. And your other option would be to use just a riser. And this is one that I made in a video a while back. So this is one tier. You can decorate on top, put the little banner or the garland to hang down on the bottom, and then put your goodies around the base of it. What do you think about this option? I like it. So I'm gonna take a piece of white tissue paper and I'm going to cut it down to fit it on top of a piece of cardstock. You wanna to try to get this smooth and wrinkle free so that it will go through your inkjet printer without any hangups. So this is how it looks so far. You just choose your little, what you wanna print out and print it. For this particular project, if you didn't have a printer, you could also use a page out of a book maybe that you already have or you can use a coloring page and just color that up. Or you could also use tissue paper or anything like a sticker, you could use that too. So I'm just using a white, like a shadow box that I got at the thrift store, but you can get these at craft stores and you can also get something similar to this at Dollar Tree. So with the tape still on here, just to make it easier to handle, I'm just gonna start cutting these into pieces while I make a decision on which one of these I want to use. I knew when I saw this on the website that there was no way I would pay $24 for this. And I knew that we could make something just as nice on a budget. So now we're gonna use this plaster chalk paint and we're gonna paint over the box. I'm gonna paint all of the surfaces on the front and then on each of the sides. And this is just so when I put down my white tissue paper, it's gonna blend in. And I didn't want a stark white, I prefer this creamy color. So that's what I'm going to do for it. But you can use whatever you have. You can also use acrylic paint, but this chalk paint is matte finish and the tissue is going to be a matte finish so it blends in nicely. I'm also going to use two of these little Christmas tags. All right, so I'm gonna get this a little more manageable and just kind of cut it in a little circular shape around here. That way I'm not having to deal with any corners and I just find when I'm using Mod Podge, if I cut things in a circle or with rounded edges, I have less trouble with the corners trying to peel up. So that's my personal choice, but you can do this however you like. I meant to mention earlier too, you could also use a pretty napkin to do something like this. That would be very nice. But since it was a bee on the original one, I was inspired to make my own bee and put down on my box. So now I'm just painting on some matte Mod Podge and removing the little brush hairs when they fall out. I'm just gonna gently place this down in a thin layer of Mod Podge and then go over the top of it with my finger just to smooth it down gently. And then what's left on the brush, I'm gonna go ahead and go around all of the edges and the border and then work my way onto the inside. And that will push any bubbles out and make it nice and flat. It's gonna blend in nicely and it almost looks like it's hand painted and I absolutely love that. I'll try to grab that link for you where I got these from and put it in the description box because these were free. So, so far, I already had the box, I already had the paint, I had the printer already, the tissue paper I had from Christmas time, I already had the Mod Podge. So far, I've done this for free. So let's see what else we can do. Now for a little bonus, I'm gonna do these little Christmas tags. They're not part of the dupe. I just wanted to go ahead, since I had such cute little bees, and make a little matching, um, coordinating tags to go along with it. And you could use these like on your tear tray, or you could use them hanging, you know, in a book, something like that. However you wanna use these for decor, there'll be great little extra pieces that will match the little box there that we did or the shadow box. They used a canvas, but I used a, uh, a shadow box. But you can get the little canvases at Dollar Tree also. So you need to let those dry, of course. Now you can use big stickers on here to say be mine, and of course I'm missing a, an E there, but I decided not to use those anyway. And I'm using some of these 
little wooden letters. You can get something similar to this at Dollar Tree. I thrifted mine. And then you can either paint them a color that coordinates if you would like or a Valentine's color. You could do red or whatever you like. But I'm going to use a furniture repair marker because I like to use these for stain. And I have a rustic home. If you are new to this channel, that you might not know that about me, but I have rustic farmhouse decor in my home. I live in a cabin, and uh, it's a log cabin. And I like to try to keep it real in this house. I, it would not look right with a modern farmhouse, so I try to go with the flow and go with what we have already in the house and this type of decor just matches and it makes me happy it's nice and cozy and woodsy and I love that I love that about rustic decor it's very homey it's very comfortable so you're just gonna go around the inside the outside all over it's not necessary to waste your paint on the back um, and then let it dry it just takes a moment to dry and then use the smallest amounts of hot glue now don't worry if you get some strings of glue here because I'm going to show you a way that you can remove that quite easily. You clean it up and make it look high end. So B and then I'm going to spell out mine. Now on theirs it was actually painted on the canvas it appears but I wanted to use something raised and I think mine looks even better. What do you think? And the fact that mine was free makes it even better of course. Now I'm just going to use my little Cricut tool here and just pull those little strings up once they dry it's easier to remove. So theirs was $24.99 and mine was free. Okay, so now we're going to go on to those little tags there. And I decided to add an X and an O on the bottom of this little B tag. So I did the same thing. I stained it, but I used a darker stain. I'm just going to use the smallest amount of hot glue to put these on the bottom of the tag. Very cute, X and O, hugs and kisses, or kisses and hugs, whichever one. Now I'm gonna overlap these tags near the top very easily. You can still see my bees, I think this is very cute. I'm gonna use some jute, and I have a jute little um, box that I roll my jute out of. I could just pull it and cut it when I need it. And I'm gonna thread it through there tie a little knot so that it is nice and long. You could use this as a little bookmarker if you wanted to. Or like I said, hang it on your tiered tray. If you have one of those metal trays with a knob on the top, this will hang perfectly off. Very cute. Love it. Love dupes. Love so inspired these little pictures come videos. from the Dollar Tree. And they come in a variety of colors, but this is the one that I found. I'm going to use some Spanish moss chalk paint. I love this beautiful green. I have flat paintbrush and a variety of ribbons. I'm also going to have some jute and this piece of fabric. Now first off, I'm going to cover up this beautiful terracotta and I'm covering it because it doesn't really match what I am doing here. Otherwise, I love the color. I'm going to take this flat brush, dip into my paint and just drag along where the paints overlap so that you can see that terracotta underneath the white. I'm starting at that line right above it. And I'm going to do this all the way around just to get a nice clean line. If you don't have um, the dexterity, you know, if you don't have a nice um, smooth hand, feel free to tape it off. I don't really care if mine is completely straight. I'm not worried about that because again, rustic. Rustic saves me. It's my best excuse for being sloppy. I'm going to go up the handle and all around just like where the paint was before. And I do two coats because the first coat is not thick enough. So here it is, wet. And I'm going to dry it down. I know that I want to be doing some decoupage on here, so I'm going to choose this little flower, but you can use anything you want. You can use a whole strip of fabric or a square or a circle or whatever you like, but I don't mind the fussy cutting because these little scissors that I have make it a pretty easy job. So I'm just going to kind of trim around the flower, and you know, if you want to do this and you don't want to trim it, you don't have to trim all around it. You can just make a circle around it. No biggie. But once it's all cut out, this is how she looks. Not perfect, and I'm fine with that. I'm gonna take some Mod Podge and a nice clean brush and put this on the spot where I know I want my little applique to be, or my little fabric piece to be. 
I want to be sure I get my leaf in there too. So I'm just going to add it right there. And I like that one leaf is kind of hanging down over. And it looks good that way to me. So now I'm just going to go around my edges and kind of seal it off. And then brush from the inside outward. That way if there are any bubbles, they come right out. You can go under the edges. You can flip your little leaves up to make sure that you get under there. Just like that. And it'll flip right back down. Now because this is matte, I'm going to go ahead and cover the entire thing so it has the same finish when it's dry as the applique does. And this is how it looks when it is all dry. And I think it's cute. This would be very cute on a, a little coffee bar or on a tiered tray. Now I have two options for the bows because for some reason when I was doing this project, I could not get the bow to come out the way I saw it in my mind. So I started off by overlapping two gold ribbons and one of these beautiful little ribbons from Dollar Tree with the, the white background and the sunflowers. I kind of overlapped them and then wrapped them around where the little seam was between the colors and tied it off there. Thank you so much. 80,000 views on my videos. Thank you, thank you to all of you who are viewing today. So this is my first option. But for some reason, it, like I said, it just wasn't coming out in my head. Coming through my hands the way I saw it in my head. So I gave it a few different tries. I'm going to take one piece of gold, one piece of floral, and one piece of jute. And I'm going to make a little shoelace bow with this. Just going to make the rabbit ears wrap around each other, poke it in the hole, pull it, and then adjust the little pieces here. And I was a little bit happier with this look and I decided to put it up there on the handle instead of wrapping it around where it's kind of in the middle and I think I like this better which way did you like best around the middle or around the top of the handle I think this looks better considering we're gonna put a little bit of greenery in there and it looks a little more balanced you'll see just a second so this is what I was comfortable with now these beautiful picks come from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut off a little bit of it and stick it down in the jar and voila. Dollar Tree. It's like a little That's jewelry dish or a candle riser or something. I'm going to use a variety of paints. I've got, I think this is just a, just brown and that's going to be the center of my sunflower. So I'm going to go around the middle of it with the brown paint. I do two coats of this by the way and dry it in between with my little dryer just like this. I'm not trying to stay in the lines or anything like that. This beautiful sunflower yellow. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous yellow. It's a lighter color. If you saw my last sunflower video, then you saw the technique I used on the hanging little sunflower decor piece. And it's kind of about the same idea here. I'm just going to put down this color first. Go all the way around from the edge of the brown all the way out. And by the way, I do paint the bottom of this later on because it looked white and I didn't like it. So I wanted it all to be nice. I wanted to give it a good, rich look. So now I'm going to dry this layer. I'm going to take a little bit of this. This is a bright yellow. Now I don't know exactly what color it is. Forgive me, I put the bottle away, but I'm mixing a little bit of that sunflower yellow with it. And I am going to take a new brush here and I'm going to pull that out. So starting in the center, I'm just going to pull it out, pull it out and up. I'm not paying too much attention to the raised areas on the sunflower. I'm not real concerned about that. As you can see, I'm blending it out into the next layer because I'm going to be blending those colors together a little bit with a dry stencil brush. So this is what you see me doing now. I'm kind of flicking it outward and going in a circular motion so that I kind of blend that middle layer into the outer layer. And this is how it looks once that's accomplished. I'm going to take this little candle holder. You can get the ones at Dollar Tree. Mine was thrifted, but you can use whatever kind you want. I started off with white. And then as soon as I got this white on there, I thought, you know what? It would look more like a stem if it was green. So I quickly dried it and took some of that moss paint, that Spanish moss, 
and then went all over here with a good two coats. It's kind of hard sometimes to get it to stick on plastic. Now I have got some black paint here and I think this is the pavement, pavement color. I'm going to take a very fine pointy brush and then put some black dots in here. I do this because this looks like sunflower seeds. A little more realistic, right? So I'll do that all over there. And now it looks like the center of a sunflower. I'm going to use a little bit of E6000. And I'm going to use some hot glue. You definitely want to use some E6000 or some other type of a glass friendly adhesive if you are going to be using, doing something like this, this type of project. So see right now the bottom is white, but I'm going to fix it. I'm going to press that down, let that glue set up. Now it's nice and strong. And I decided, yeah, we need to go ahead and do that bottom. So I just took that same sunflower yellow and went all over that with that same stencil brush I had already used. And this is how it is. You'll see at the end when I say This is so easy. So I found these beautiful stickers here and they came from Dollar Tree and this frame. It is a four by four and it just has two piece, pieces of glass in the inside. I took my plastic off and now you twist these little pieces here. It's going to lift the back out and then you can get your two pieces of glass out. One piece has a tiny bit of adhesive holding this paper in place. So I'm just going to pull that off, get it off with my fingers as best as I can and then clean that up with some alcohol and a nice clean microfiber wipe. Now I'm going to lay down my glass here and start applying my stickers and whatever style and fashion that is in my little head. And I encourage you to do the same thing. You don't have to do the same thing anybody else does. You know, make it your own. So I love the outdoors. I lo love sunflowers. And I'm doing a little something different for you guys. So at the end of this video, after the final reveal, I did a little clip of my yard and walking around my yard and what the beautiful weather is like today and walking to the lake so I even got my blueberry tree in there so if you want to stay tuned to the very end you'll get to see all of that goodness and I would love for you to get to know me better and get to know you better by giving you some little you know tidbits of my life along the way if that's something that interests you be sure to let me know in the comment section and I appreciate it very much okay so you can cut these pieces off to kind of customize this however you like it. I wanted my sunflowers that I put down to have little stems. So I just made them out of a piece that I had cut down smaller. So now they connect and don't those look like they were intended to be that way. Love it. So I'm not going to use those other petals there. I'm just going to use it just like this. I like that. And now I can put down my bottom glass. I'm going to flip this over and put it back in. Put the back frame piece on and then close down those little clasp and then that little piece of artwork is complete i've got two options for you um, that i'm going to show you that you can do if you would like to put some type of a backing on here or what it would look like if you leaned it against something so this is just a placemat that i have but if you wanted some type of a backing to fit it that looks really pretty and you could also use like a piece of colored I'm going to use some blossom paper. white. I'm going to use this little tray and I got a pack of like 12 of these. I'm going to use some black and I'm going to use this sticker pack. All right, so I'm going to take that paint and just put a dot in the middle of my tray, which I have already spray painted white with just one coat. And I'm going to go around this tray to make it look like a little chalkboard. I'm just pressing down, that's like a round tip brush, and I'm just pressing down and dragging it around the edges and turning that tray to kind of help me. And I did put a little too much paint on, but I scraped it off and put it back in the bottle because I'm cheap like that. No, I'm thrifty like that. After it is dry, it's gonna look like this. Doesn't have to be perfect because a chalkboard isn't either. I'm gonna pick this sticker and place it down in the middle. And it's a little 3D sticker, it's really cute. I'm gonna press it down and I think it looks fantastic on here. 
So this is what it's going to look like before I put my antiquing wax on it. I'm going to use another flat stencil brush. going to offload a lot of that and then I'm just going to start kind of flicking it around the edges because the edges of this little tray are embellished. They're kind of raised and I wanted to kind of bring that out and make it match a little bit better to what's going on on the sticker on the inside of the tray. So that's what I'm doing here and I'll give you a look at that so now you can see that you can do it either way. A little bit of light distressing or you could just leave it plain. Very cute for a tear tray I think. Here are our projects. Now see I put my little bird there and it looks like a little bird bath doesn't it? I think that is precious. You can see right through that frame onto the backing. I love that. Which one of you, these do you like experiment best? experiment for me because I heard this could be done, that you could use some type of acrylic on wood right outside. I let them dry overnight. I sprayed them, you know, three times, let them dry in between. Now I'm just choosing which one I want. And I've chosen the print that I like. And this one does have kind of a grayish background behind it. And I'm just going to fold my paper over on top of it now. So I'm going to put this down here. You're going to put it down for the whatever amount of time that is required for whatever type of um, base that you're using. And I'm going to pull it off. Now notice this. You see how, okay, my print has set and that's good, but you see how it's sticking? I saw another person do this and I can't remember the name, so I do apologize. Um, you can let me know if you've seen the media, my video and you know what I'm talking about. But the paper comes off with a damp rag so easily. With sublimation, it is a chemical process. It is bonded with that material. You cannot wipe it or rub it off. So I'm just taking some white wax and adding to it all around the edges, kind of maybe trying to blend out the darker spots where that line is showing underneath. So this is how it looks with the white wax and it does kind of fade it out or give it like a, you know, a faded look on the edges. But I'm going to now take the darker wax and I'm going to add that onto all of these little scrolly areas. And by the way, I did break one of the corners off, but I fixed that too. We can always work with it. We don't give up, right? Okay, so I'm just going over all of these corners. So you're going to continue around just like this. I'm also going to go over my edges with that. All around the trim. A piece like this could certainly be used for Easter. It could be used for spring. I know that when I thrift, I find little wood pieces and little things like this all the time. You can certainly also get these at Dollar Tree if that is something that you are interested in. I know I've seen wood pieces there. You could maybe try this on a scrap piece of wood, maybe from a project that you've done previously. Now, what do you think? Isn't this precious? It looks so vintage to me. I really like this. All right, I have got some old ribbon here that I got at the thrift store. And we're going to make a little hanging sign out of this. Very simple project, y'all. I'm going to just cut those little ends on the slant. I don't want them to fray. And then just using the holes that are already there, I'm going to feed my um, ribbon through there. It's a thin ribbon, but you could use jute. Maybe you do a different type of project or you like a different style. I'm adding more cottage into my home, so I think that this is a very fitting little picture and little hanging sign, and this beautiful satin ribbon just works perfect. And I'm just going to tie just a simple little tie here. Pull that string down in the back. I'm not even going to cut it off because I think it looks nice just like that. And then when you flip it over, you have a beautiful little hanging sign. If you wanted to add some little greenery or something to this, you could. I'm just going to add another little simple shoestring bow. This is how we make it. Oh, my hands are a mess. Look at all that wax on my hands. Okay, so that's an easy bow, right? Simple, simple to make. And just pull it down, make those little loops as long as you want. I want to kind of flatten it in the middle, make sure I got the right side up. And I'm going to put it right there where I broke it. And I'm just going to mask it. You won't even be able to tell. Add a little glue. You can use hot glue or whatever you have, but this is what I had. So I'm just going to put this on here, making sure I put the right side down. Let it dry. The wood that we use the acrylic spray paint on. Made a pretty little vintagey cottage sign. 
I also like to try out new products. Thank you so very much for stopping by. And I will see you all again very soon. Bye.